if they made all our young boys Janissaries, then how come we still have a Greek nation? How come we Greeks are still there, we still speak Greek, and we are still Greek? We just Greek worship nation. one God, straightforward, simple. Basically, Basically, nationality stays the same. I will die Greek, inshallah. So that's also for my parents that they know that I will die Greek. How do we test? If people want to know, how do I know you're Greek? Hey, this guy, maybe he's You're absolutely right. Maybe he's, he's just fake. Okay. Okay, let's ask one more question. Look at what Islam Assalamu alaikum, greetings and peace. How are you guys doing? We're in London and look who I found. Assalamu alaikum, Shay. How are you? <laughs> Dr. <laughs> Steph Keres. That's correct, yes. And you're uh, from the background, he accepted Islam 20 years ago. You accepted Islam, correct. right? That's correct, that's correct. Uh, and guess what? He's from a Greek background. And some people out there are like, oh, he became a Turk? What do you have to say to that? <laughs> you know, in, in the Balkans, like this, people identify the religion, they put you actually together with the nationality. So as soon as you become Muslim, you become a Turk. But that's a very important point. We need to realize that when you become a Muslim, you become a Muslim. You don't change nationality, but you change religion or actually way of life. Let's call it that way because Islam is actually a deen. It's a way of life, guys. It's not just a, um, a religion, you know, there's much more to it. And everybody who's practicing Islam understands what I'm, what I'm saying, what I want to say with that. Basically, nationality stays the same. I will die Greek, inshallah. So that's also for my parents that they know that I will die Greek. <laughs> so I didn't change nationality. Um, I still have the same skin color. I haven't changed that. So alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah, what changed is my way of life, which has become better, alhamdulillah. And I've become a more fulfilled person. Alhamdulillah, I got married. I have seven children, alhamdulillah. So I'm quite happy uh, with my way of life and this chosen way of life since uh, 1992, which is, how is it, 26, 26, 27 years ago, isn't it? Yeah, wow, this is amazing because we, we, we have, what's important now is we have so many people who are coming to the realization that there's a purpose in life. All right. I want to live it. You had to go through so many challenges because now you're not just going to accept Islam for the fun of it. So you really put it to the test. Safe to say? Uh, I mean, uh, three years you were investigating? Three absolutely years? Absolutely true, yeah. It took me three years to come to the point to say Shahada. Three years? I mean, you have to understand, again, as we said, from the region where I come from, where we come from, actually, yeah. both from the Balkan Peninsula, people identify themselves with, you know, religion and nationality is one thing, it's the same thing for them. So we have to understand, changing religion means also changing nationality, according to them. But that did not happen. That's not yeah. my idea, of course, alhamdulillah. Yeah. We became Muslim. My family is Muslim, alhamdulillah. My wife, by the way, is also a revert, as yeah. we call it. She is from South America. So also for her, it was like accepting for them down there, it's more being an, an, an Indian. Yeah, so you're not, so, a, you're not a, you don't become a Pakistani. You don't become, <laughs> you don't become, because you're Muslim, you're kind of Arab. Yeah. Yeah. No, just the same way if you become a Muslim, you don't become a Turk. No, you just become someone who has submitted to... Look at this. This is, this is, this is turn on the like, light bulb, turn on the, the, the brain. Muslim is one who submits to the will of the creator, not the creation. That's what a Muslim is. That's right. You chose to do that after deep contemplation, research based on proof and evidence, and you're here on the Dean Show today. Alhamdulillah. And actually, now you actually, you, you're a historian, so you really talk to us about that. Because you have to, you know, there's a lot of these uh, myths that are perpetuated. You got some truth in there, and then you got it mixed in with half truths and lies and all this bunch of hodgepodge and a, a, a big buffet, That's right. right? And then it, it brought you to where you are today. That's the point is, I mean, many people find Islam through the Adhan or through the Quran or through many, 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 many things. But what happened to me was I became a historian. Actually, I accepted Islam through history and that made me a historian, that made me a Muslim, that made me a Muslim historian, mashallah. So, alhamdulillah, nowadays I can proudly say that Islam and history goes together for me. History brought me to Islam and Islam brought me further, alhamdulillah. So 26 years later, I have realized that a lot of myths and a lot of lies were told to us at that time. I was going to a Greek school, Greek primary school, and um, the same lies and stories they were telling them that time, they're telling them even nowadays. But the difference is that many have woken up and many have seen that, yes, not all of these things they're telling us at school were true, and not all of these things they're telling us even nowadays are true and are, are to be believed. So uh, please be careful, that's all I have to say. Please be careful what they're telling you at school. Look deeper into it. Find out what actually happened in history, as difficult as it, as, as difficult as it might seem. In the end, Allah showed me the way, alhamdulillah. So I can just say that, um, alhamdulillah, I mean, uh, his, the, 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 the truth of history led me to Islam, to the truth of, of, of our life, 
And that's what's more important, actually, than history itself, you know. Mm -hmm. But that led me to, to the dean. From the, the I, I, I interviewed a, a former NFL alumni, oh, wow. and he's also from the Greek, Greek background. Okay. And his name is Tim, and inshallah, this show also gets to him, where he comes from the Greek background. He's been hanging around with some Muslims. And he's really liking, he I gifted him a Quran and some of the other uh, literature talking about the purpose of life and, you know, the miracles in Islam, prophecies, all of the, 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 um, the authenticity of the Quran list goes on because we don't just blindly surrender in Islam. It's based on authentic facts. evidence, facts, proofs. All right. So now he's actually been given about six, seven months to live. He has a, I believe it's a, some form of a leukemia. And they died, they pretty much written him off, and now he's been exposed to Muslims. But now he's also at this crucial point in his life. What advice? You coming from a Greek background, you can connect with him. But the pressure is now. The pressure. Yeah. He's 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 gotten out. So there's some programs with him. He's talking, you know, uh, on behalf of all the good experiences that he's had with Muslims. But now death is approaching, and he's in a battle. Like, okay, my Greek background, Christian or Orthodox. A Christian and now this is coming to him what advice do you have for him very simple one of the most important thing your Greekness whatever you feel that you are you're Greek you will stay Greek you will die Greek I whoever you are whatever you you believe you believe is in the end you will be Greek you are you will die as a Greek one important thing is you're gonna stand in front of your creator the creator is not gonna ask you were you a good Greek you know how did you live your life as a Greek but the creator is gonna ask you how did you worship me how did you worship God do you believe in God? Who is God? What do you believe God is actually? Who do you believe brought God to you? Who was the messenger? Um, so being Greek has nothing to do with uh, finding the, 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 uh, the death angels later who will be waiting for you on your bedside. So be careful of that. Really look at that. You, that your life is coming to an end. A new life is starting. And it can be happy or it can be very sad. You know, and being Greek has nothing to do. The end is very important. And hopefully, inshallah, look into the deen, look into what your creator told you to do. Forget if it's called Islam or Christianity or Orthodoxy or Catholicism. Look into who's the creator, what did the creator tell us to do. Look at the authentic sources and find out actually what an end, a good end would be for you. So that's my advice actually. Look into it and forget what people say. Forget everything that, that, that your surrounding is telling you. Uh, that is not going to help him. No surrounding, no Greekness, no nothing is going to help you except one thing: believe in your Creator, yeah. and you will see Him, inshallah. You will, inshallah, meet Him later. Yeah. Do you, you speak know? Greek? I speak Greek. Yes. Uh, say something in Greek. How you doing? Tikanis. Tikanis. <laughs> and how would someone respond to that? Tikani said, Nip "Kala, kala." Yes. Tikanis, kala. So, <laughs> how do we test? If people want to know, how do I know you're Greek? Hey, this guy maybe. He's yeah, absolutely right. Maybe he's, he's just fake. Okay. Okay. Let's ask one more question. Kitaxte ti leto Islam. Κοιτάξτε τι λένε οι, 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 τα βιβλία και μην, μην βλέπετε τι κάνουν οι μουσουλμάνοι. Έτσι, προσοχή παιδιά, μην ακούτε τι σας λένε. Σας λένε παραμύθια, σας λένε μύθους, σας λένε ψέματα. Ώστε προσοχή. So, okay, we, 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 we did the authenticity test, all right? Uh, tell us one more... Did I pass it? Tell, tell us uh, one more thing. Tell us uh, one of the myths that's, that was perpetuated in, in the schools growing up and uh, what the reality was. The Ottoman Empire. The Ottomans coming to, Tur to Greece, as they say, the Turks, as they call them, coming and raping our women, taking our children away, making them all Janissaries. Now, the question that I had was, if they made all our young boys Janissaries, then how come we still have a Greek nation? How come we Greeks are still there, we still speak Greek, and we are still Greek, we are a Greek nation? Um, raping all our women, well, what happened to all of them? They still, after that, there was a Greek nation still, as there was a Serbian nation, as there was a, a Bosnian nation, and Albanian, and so on and so on. So, again, they exaggerate. History is um, sometimes <laughs> is nothing else but a bunch of lies, you know, put together. Um, so we have to be careful. We have to be careful. Just look at it from a neutral perspective. Try to look at history from a different perspective, or a more neutral one, if you can. Otherwise, history is a very biased thing. You know, Churchill said um, history is written by the winners, by the victors. Ch so, Churchill. Churchill, yes. Yeah, so basically, so that's very true, isn't you, it? You want to really make sure it's history, not, as we say, his, his history. history. Yeah. Uh, uh, you had this tragic terrorist attack that happened just recently by this person who came into a house of worship people are worshiping the one God the Creator connecting 
with their creator, trying to have peace. The guy comes in and massacres. It was a 50 innocent human beings. Yes. Women were, were killed. You had uh, children also. What would you, because you've also helped through this history, de-radicalize people because this national, nationalism, and then some people, they try to hide behind a religion, a certain religion, but you educate them through history to give the facts, to de-radicalize them, to help, you know, stop people like this who are out there. How does your work help, would, how would your work, more people being exposed to it, and Islam help to stop people like this who have these twisted, deranged, crazy, psychopathic ideas to go and gun down in, in, innocent human beings? Well, subhanAllah, um, a, a big topic that you mentioned here now, a very big one. Uh, we should not forget that uh, people like him, you know, the, the terrorist of, of, of New Zealand basically, uh, there's many people who have this mindset. They believe that uh, Islam is a problem for the West or for certain countries, that the Muslims come here to invade us. Uh, but again, uh, what I'm trying to rectify is not only our past history, but also our very uh, our present, basically. Is this all true? Is this really like this, that Muslims are here to eradicate the Western culture and Western civilization? What is a Muslim, actually? Because believe me, if you had asked him, or if you ask him, uh, what does it mean, Islam? He wouldn't be able to tell you. I'm sure that he wouldn't. He wouldn't be able to tell you what Islam is. The or what terrorists a Muslim is. would have no idea. Huh? You know, they, would, they would not. They would, he would just say <laughs> a terrorist, but he himself is a terrorist, basically. So um, there is education is very important. Education on the right path is very important. That, that's the most important thing. And don't lie to our children. Don't lie to our youngsters. Don't lie to them. I heard something crazy in Greece. 2012, a documentary came out. Uh, and there was a bunch of academics, Greek academics, who came together and made this documentary, an excellent documentary, the first time that I saw something like this on Greek TV. Um, and they admitted that indeed all these decades we were lying to our children. They admitted this openly. And when they were asked, why? Why is the system like this in Greece? Why do we have to lie to our youngsters? They said, listen to that, because we want our youngsters to love their country. And my question is, if you need to lie to your, to your youngsters in order for them to love your, their country, then there's something wrong with the country, right? <laughs> so yeah, wow. it's, it's crazy, yes, it's crazy. Mm. Yeah. So yeah, this is, this is very a sad state because you see like with this hate, it perpetuates more hate and then that leads to violence like we saw in New Zealand, what had happened. And do you, do you see that this is, because we don't obviously blame Christianity. And like people will go ahead and as soon as someone somehow, anyhow, connected to Islam, not practicing Muslim at all. Muslim name, something, yes, yes. Yes. And then they'll right away, 24-7, media coverage. It's even a known fact that, you know, someone who's connected to being a Muslim or Muslim, whatever the case, five times more media coverage. Yep. It's pumped out and yep. the fear machine starts to push out the yep. propaganda. But you didn't see in this case, you know, this guy making a pledge to the Templar Knights. You know, he was chanting, you know, this Chetnik uh, Serbian song. They mm. committed this worst mm. genocide. Mm. They were on a crusade to eradicate Muslims. Mm -hmm. So when you see that as a historian, what underlining for what's going on behind the scenes that many of the people they're not aware of that you think they should be aware of? Yeah, history, indeed. It brings you back to history. It brings you back to uh, a twisted idea of history, by the way, because this is what you just mentioned, what, what, what his idea was his, of history was a twisted mindset of history and uh, a misunderstanding and uh, or a... Uh, Rather, um, uh, yeah, a misunderstanding of history and of uh, um, of myths again, as we just explained, the idea of myths and 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 lies that are, have become uh, the truth to him and to everybody who's following him, basically. So, in the end, um, it is very important to get uh, a clear education, a clear understanding of what it actually means, what history means, what the truth is in history, and what are lies, and we have to start distinguishing. That's the truth. That's the lie, and. That, is, that can be very difficult for certain individuals, okay? Um, but it all goes back to your mindset. How, uh, how do you understand your surrounding? How do you understand people around you? And I mean, this individual obviously um, uh, has a twisted mindset. And, um, and unfortunately, he's not the only one. There are many more who uh, have a twisted mindset yeah. and we have to try to correct them, try to find out what can we do. What, what do you think, we do? because we, we, we ourselves, anyone in, let's say, the community of, of Muslims, as soon as somebody has these twisted ideas, these mindsets, 
we as a collective community, we've become like professional condemners, yes. right? People who do some things that are just totally opposite to Islam, foreign to Islam. There's no sanction whatsoever in Islam. We're the first to call them out, even though we don't have a platform to be like, you know, out there on a microphone constantly with the media. But now what about these, these, these radical people who are hiding? We don't believe these people represent Christianity, sure, sure. but now, is it a duty of the good Christians out there, so many of them, to go ahead and call out when they see some of these zealous, these radicals coming out and they try to hide behind their religion to go ahead and call them out because that's that growing threat. They say far right, but when you look at who these people are, they're actually, they will be connected somehow to Christian. But we don't, again, we don't blame Christianity or Christians, but you have to come out and like Muslims do, to go ahead and call these black sheep out. What do you think about what this has a, uh, you're absolutely right. I mean, what happens as soon as it's somebody... We saw it in, in, in Liège some years back in, in Belgium. Um, some kind of deluded person, I don't know what he was, he was a criminal who was in prison, a Moroccan guy or with a Moroccan surname. Uh, he went up there and killed some people and suddenly it was a Muslim thing again. It was a terrorist act by a Muslim. So you're absolutely right. As soon as it's somebody with a Muslim name, as somebody who has a Muslim background, it is Islam that has to be uh, put on the cross. But here, there was, they didn't check into uh, what kind of church he went to. They didn't uh, ask for any white leader to apologize for what this person did, uh, this terrorist. Um, nobody um, asked any specific organization where he went to, what he did. But they would, had it been a Muslim, he would have been, of course, all over the media, as you said, five times more coverage. Um, it would have been, um, um, they would have looked into what mosque he has been to, who has radicalized this person, who made this person believe the things that he believed. So absolutely right. I mean, what can I say on this one? That is unfortunately the, state, the sad state of affairs that we're in now at the moment. Um, we have to, and I still believe, we should not just go out and condemn every time when something is happening like that, especially as Muslims. Why do I have, in the UK, in Greece, in Germany, have to condemn somebody did yeah, something yeah. In, in, in Asia or in so, America? Why? why? Yeah, so that, that, that's a good point. So just like Christians don't have to come out and condemn every time some lunatic like this does that, same thing, they shouldn't hold Muslims responsible for some, some deranged lunatic psychopath who does something opposite to the teachings of Islam. Absolutely. Yeah. A uh, couple more points before we come to a close. Now that you have many Croatians and being almost at the point, we're going to be visiting Bosnia, inshallah, soon. You have, I hear a lot of great stories that we'll capture, inshallah, God willing, of Serbians accepting Islam. And again, Muslim. you don't change your DNA or become a Bosnian because <laughs> You yes. became a Muslim when yes. you submitted their will yes. to the Creator. Uh, Croatians accepting Islam, they don't believe in Trinity, worshiping a man, or these things are confusing, God three and one. No, just worship one God. Straightforward, simple, based on proof and evidence. Now, the challenge that they have, you know, just like you had, but you look, you're, you're an example of courage. You're, you're an example of someone who transcended that. What advice do you have for them? Very simple. Look into what the message actually is. What is the message? Is it, forget the name Islam, Christianity, everything else. Just look into your creator. You are created. That's a clear fact. You are created by somebody. Okay? This somebody is who? This creator is who? How do you find this creator? Now, let's forget all names calling, name callings, and forget the, you know, religion, Islam, Christianity. Let's just look at the creator. Wouldn't the creator want us to, re to, to recognize him? Wouldn't the creator want us to worship him? How do you worship him? Now, we all know, if you look at, Movies about Jesus, how did he worship? Didn't he fall down on the ground like we do as Muslims? Didn't he worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, God, the way that we see Muslims worshiping them? Didn't Jesus look like Muslim, <laughs> like we look nowadays? So, I mean, these are clear facts. There's not, there's not a lot that you can say about it. It's very clear. If you want to, and I'll tell you one thing, I was actually even fighting against it actively for a moment. There was some times that I thought, no, it cannot be. You didn't, cannot, want, you didn't, didn't want, want to. You didn't want to submit in Islam. Absolutely. You didn't Absolutely. want to accept Islam. Absolutely. Were, but I looked into that the way that okay, forget Islam. As I just say, forget that this is called Islam. Look into the facts. If God wants you to submit to Him, and this is the way that you know that others have submitted to Him, that you know that Jesus has submitted to Him. So hey. You might call it Islam, but in the end, that's the truth. So it doesn't really matter what you call it. In the end, it's one God and you worship this one creator. And the way you worship him is also very clear. The Quran is there, it's very, very clear. The Quran is, is proven that it has never changed. The Quran is out there and it's always has stayed the same. There is no difference in the Quran. Whereas we have different Bibles, we know that. Yeah. So, I mean, what more can I say? It's very, that, it's very That's deep, don't get caught up in the names. Look at what, really what the message is and that's calling the human being to worship 
the creator, not the creation. I always say if you can dig that, you will be able to dig the rest. It will all fall in place. <laughs> now, tell us about this book. As a historian, you have, this, uh, you have another book uh, coming out on top of the book that you already have, and where, where can people... Uh, there is, the, the, I wrote the textbook. Well, yeah. actually, the last two to three years, I, I've been busy with um, gathering sources here, left and right and up and down and in any kind of languages. And there's a textbook coming out, inshallah, in Ramadan in May. Um, and this textbook is about Islam in Europe. How did Islam enter Europe? How has it become part of Europe, I call it, actually? And we're looking into the three roots. It means Al-Andalus, so Spain, Portugal, Italy, and so on. Um, the Ottoman Empire and the Tatars. So these are the three roots. As well as we're looking into the Vikings, there has been con there was uh, it, it's proven that there was connections between the Vikings and the Muslims, especially in Al-Andalus. There have been Vikings who accepted Islam, um, and uh, the last issue is the English version will focus on the British Isles as well. You would not say that Britain and the British Isles in general um, had have a history of Islam long, long, long before in the, in the 1960s and 70s when many Pakistani guest workers came over here. So it is not necessarily something uh, new for the British Isles, for example, not at all. Uh, so yeah, this is the one textbook with regards to the, uh, the English textbook. Yeah. The German textbook focuses also on the German-speaking countries, so Germany, Austria, and Switzerland. As amazing, the history is absolutely unbelievable. Ama no? Amazing, and this book is called? The History of Islam in Europe. Yeah, it's it, a textbook. You will find it from Ramadan on Inshallah. From my, whoever wants can contact me. How, do, how can they contact you? Info at stephcaris.com. So my name, info at stephcaris.com. That's it. And you got uh, so much, so many gems here from this program, so many things that you can benefit from. We cleared a lot of these misconceptions, misnotions. And go ahead and leave some of the takeaways that you are able to take away from this episode. If you're someone struggling also from ethnicity, a lot of the false propaganda is perpetuated against Muslims and Islam. We said put the name tags, really see what Islam means. Look at the meaning and the message behind it and know that the truth will always be resisted. Every time there's the truth, it's gonna be fought. So go ahead and if you like what we had to say, continue to tune in, read the book. And there was one interesting, gentleman, a scholar who is actually from, from Britain in the book that you talk about. What was his name that accepted Islam? Yeah, Abdullah Quillam William. He accepted Islam in the 19th century. And He's he a well-known figure? Victor. He is a well-known figure in the British. Say his name again. Abdullah Quillam William. Yeah. He became the Sheikh al-Islam of the British Isles by the Ottoman Empire. And uh, he was living in Victorian England and he established the first mosque ever in this country, in Britain. In Britain. And he was a white solicitor, you know, a white guy who accepted Islam, so not Pakistani, not from outside, not Asian, yeah. not, not African. And uh, through him, actually, more than 100 people accepted Islam, through him, if not even more. Yeah. Uh, I mean, that's amazing. That's an amazing life. We, we covered a lot. So this is a, another gem that's, it, that's in the book. If you like the idea of worshiping only one God, to know your purpose, why you're here, where you're going when you die, and it's based on evidence and proof. Read the Quran, connect with us, continue to tune in to the Dean Show. We'll see you next time. Until then, peace be with you. Salam alaikum. <laughs>